In this Inkscape lesson, we'll use the 3D Box tool, the Text tool, and three awesome extensions to create this quick and easy 3D text effect. Let's begin by activating the 3D Box tool over here. With this tool, we can click and drag in the canvas to create 3D boxes. However, because the X and Z axis vanishing points by default are attached to the sides of the page, we can get better results by creating boxes inside the page. We can move the box around in perspective by clicking and dragging the X here. And we can resize the box in different directions using these nodes. We can also move the vanishing points around. Okay, when we have the box the way we want it, let's change it into a path by going to Path, Object to Path. After we do this, we can no longer move the box around in perspective or resize parts of it. However, if we go to the Select tool, we can now move the box away from the page without affecting the perspective. And we can go ahead and delete the other boxes. Okay, so the box is currently a group of six paths, with each side of the box being a separate path. We want to ungroup all of them first by going to Object, Ungroup. And now we can select the individual sides. If we want, we can go ahead and delete all of the sides that we can't currently see by first selecting everything, then holding Shift and clicking the visible sides to remove them from the selection. Now with just the hidden side selected, we can press Delete. Alright, next, let's go to the Text tool and click inside the canvas to create a text object. And for this one, I'll type 3D Text. Feel free to use whatever font you want, but I'll change mine to Roboto. Set the style to heavy. I'll also increase the font size a bit so it's easier to see. Okay, now let's go back to the Select tool. Let's duplicate the text object by right-clicking it and choosing Duplicate. Let's move the duplicate somewhere else. Then we can double-click it to switch to the Text tool. I'll change the text of this one to Design. Alright, we're next going to use the Perspective extension to map the text objects onto the long sides of the box. Two conditions are required in order for this to work. First, the object that we want to map onto has to be a quadrilateral path, which is already the case for the sides of the box. Second, the object that we want to map needs to be either a path or a group of paths. These are currently text objects, so we first need to turn them into paths, which we can do by selecting them both with the Select tool and going to Path, Object to Path. This actually turns each text object into a group of paths, which is fine. We also want to make sure the text groups are above the quadrilaterals in the canvas. Currently, the top text is below the quadrilaterals, so with the text groups selected, we can click this button up here to raise them to the top. Okay, and when we do map a text group onto a quadrilateral, the text group will be stretched to fill up all of the quadrilaterals area. It would probably be better to put some space between the quadrilaterals so that the map text won't be touching. To do this easily, we can select all of the quadrilaterals and go to Path, Inset. And we might need to do it a couple more times. That should work. Alright, now we want to first have one of the text groups selected, then select one of the quadrilaterals by holding Shift and clicking it. Now we can go to Extensions, Modify Path, Perspective. Okay, so another thing to know about the Perspective extension is that the order in which the quadrilateral's nodes were drawn will affect the way in which the objects get mapped onto it. This might be how we want our text to look, but if we would rather have the text go from the back of the quadrilateral to the front, we'll first need to reverse the direction of the quadrilateral's nodes. To do this, let's press Ctrl Z to undo, and with just the quadrilateral selected, let's go to Path, Reverse. Now we want to select the text again, then the quadrilateral, and go to Extensions, Modify Path, Perspective. Perfect. And now we can delete the quadrilateral. Okay, let's select the other long quadrilateral and go to Path, Reverse. Then let's select the text, hold Shift and select the quadrilateral, and this time we can just go to Extensions, Previous Extension. Then delete the quadrilateral. Alright, for this text, let's give it a stroke color, which we can do by holding Shift and clicking a color down here. I'll go with black. Let's turn off its fill color by clicking the red X here. I'm going to right click the stroke width here and change it to 1. Now with the path still selected, let's go to Extensions, Generate from Path, Voronoi Pattern. Let's go ahead and check Live Preview down here. So basically what this does is, 
it replaces the object's fill with a pattern that it creates by subdividing the area into various small cells. We can change the average size of the cells with this box here. For the size of border box here, if we use a value that is the same as or higher than the average size, it will make the edges of the pattern fit together seamlessly. However, this is really only useful if we're applying the extension to multiple paths that are touching. Alright, let's go ahead and click apply and close this out. Okay, and for this side, we can give it a different fill color if we want. Let's also give it a black stroke. Make sure it has the same stroke width as the text. Let's also give this a Voronoi pattern fill. However, if we just apply the Voronoi pattern extension right now by going to extensions, previous extension, as I mentioned earlier, it will replace the object's fill color with the pattern. So first we can undo that, then let's duplicate the object by right clicking it and choosing duplicate. And let's apply the extension to the duplicate. There we go. Alright, now let's say we want to change the color of the Voronoi patterns. For example, if we wanted to put all of this on a black background, we might want to change all of the black to white first. So we can give the text at the top a white fill and change the stroke color of the other objects to white. Now we can draw a rectangle over this, give it a black fill, turn off the stroke by holding shift and clicking the red X, then go to the select tool and lower it to the bottom by clicking this button up here. Alright, so we also want to change the Voronoi patterns to white, especially for the text here so that we can see it. If we just choose white for the fill, it will replace the pattern with solid white, so let's undo that. To change the color of the pattern, we can use another extension called Replace Color. To apply this extension, let's go to Extensions, Color, Replace Color. Let's go ahead and check Live Preview. Okay, so first, in the Color to Replace tab, we can choose which color of the selected object that we want to replace. The color we want to replace is black, which is actually already chosen by default. Next, in the New Color tab, we can choose which color that we want to replace the other color with. In our case, we want to replace it with white, so we can simply move the value slider here all the way to the right. Nice. Okay, let's click apply and close this out. Then we can select the pattern object on this side and go to extensions, previous extension. And that's it for a quick and easy 3D text effect. Thank you very much for watching and I'll see you in the next one.